everybody, my name is Stephen McPherson, and this is Cynthia Cavalcanti, and we're coming to you for the Spiritist Network. So we're coming to you tonight um, with a special edition of our study group, and we wanted to talk about some current issues. As I was going through YouTube, I found this video, um, an interview with Larry King and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is a pretty famous astrophysicist, very well accomplished. He had a series on PBS. He's very he's he's very, a very public scientist. Made a lot of statements. He's a very intelligent man, and I came across his video, and I I felt like um, there was a lot of points that he made that I really agreed with, and a few points that I disagreed with, and so I thought it might be interesting to um, show you a few clips from the video, and we could talk about it in the light of spiritism. In this interview, uh, Larry King poses the question to Neil deGrasse Tyson, what happens when we die? Here is his first response. The moment you die, what happens? You don't maintain the energy. Your temperature drops. How far does it drop? To room temperature. At a funeral in the casket, if you touch the hand of the person in the casket, your first thought is, the body's cold. No, it's not, it's room temperature. But it's cold compared to 100 degrees. They're no longer burning this energy. So this is a very basic observation about death um, from a physiological standpoint and from a uh, physical standpoint um, that when we die, uh, we, we, start, we stop metabolizing energy. Um, so there's, there's really no consideration given to the spirit. I feel like it's really like he's ex expressing it like a scientist would look at it um, and just just purely through observation objectively. What do you take from this? Every time I see this kind of interview, someone like him is such a, uh, an amazing uh, scientist and a visionary. And I always have this question in the back of my head, does he really believe in that? and the limitations that science is today. We are advanced in so many things and science has discovered a lot of things, but yet still we don't understand the whole system, the body, the biological system, the physical body. We cannot explain everything yet. So we need to be prepared first and to understand the body itself in order to go to the spiritual, don't you think? So every time I see this type of discussion, in the back of my head is like someone so smart and so dedicated like this scientist, does he or she really believes that that's it, that we, that we are in the limitations of the material body, the, the matter, or would they accept to work with that, but they have in the back of their mind, they have this question, I want to find out something else, something that goes beyond that, but they, they can't. They, what we have right now, basically we can't, and, don't and, you think? And Neil deGrasse Tyson, he's an astrophysicist, so he spends his time studying outer space. And I was just thinking as you were talking about how um, people have said that it's interesting that we're so interested in outer space when we actually only know 3% <laughs> of our own ocean in our planet. And you think about even our own body, how much do we really know? We, exactly. a, a lot of times we think we know everything. Uh, you know, a lot of people do, a lot of uh, scientists and doctors think, but like really if they want to explain, you know, why diseases happen, why things happen, like why, you know, why we can't prevent aging, um, and, and yeah. there's, we don't really have all the answers yet. Um, so, so, and I, I, I do, like, as I watch this, I wonder, like, does Neil deGrasse Tyson, is he expressing this answer purely as a scientist? And he's just, like, he's, he's, he doesn't want to say anything in public that, exactly. would, that somebody could contest? Exactly. Or is this truly what he believes? Right. How um, far can he go? And would that hurt his, uh, the, this, his field work and... You know, in order to find out if there is more things in there, you 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 gotta be, you gotta keep stick with that with what you have. Otherwise, you can move forward. You can step up to the to the truth if you if you don't do your homework. We gotta do our homework. We gotta find out everything about 
the body itself and then we, when we are mature enough spiritually speaking we will find out eventually that's that's what's gonna happen mm -hmm. um, so let's let's move on to the next clip okay okay there's no evidence that I have any consciousness of anything and by the way is that so weird did you have consciousness before you were born were you saying how come I'm not on earth my gosh I need to be on earth or how come, where, where am I no, you, there's just the state of non-existence. So from this statement, uh, I'm led to believe that, that Neil deGrasse Tyson does not believe in reincarnation, does not believe in multiple lives, does not believe in that we had a spirit before we were born. Um, just from what he's saying, and um, because of the way he kind of says, like, not just that there's no evidence, which, which would any scientist might say, but that he's, the way he kind of says, like, well, you know, does, does that sound so weird? You know, like, um, and, and no, it doesn't. As I was watching this, I was thinking, um, I felt the same way um, as I was growing up and as I st started asking questions about life. Um, but Spiritism gave me the answers to these questions about why we don't remember our past lives, um, why we're born in this sort of state of amnesia, um, and actually, um, how that's actually helpful to us in our incarnation. Um, what, what, do you, what do you make of this statement? Yeah, I agree with you because at first it might sound some, that it's not, it's not just that we forgot about everything, but then when we study a little bit more, it resonates with us. Yeah, I might don't want to remember everything, actually. I, the, this is a the blessing. Good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Right? Yeah, so I, I am glad this system exists and made me forget what he said that, you know, you, you don't know outside of this, you don't know what happened before, and I am glad. Today I'm glad. But I think he has to resonate, like, with within you, uh, this truth because one thing is I kind of I, I'm a little bit skeptical with everything too at first I, I don't believe just because Science is saying just because of this because science they make me say too. Let's remember Galileo Galilei and You know all this power when you have so much power it is easy to get lost in that in that power so I investigate everything, but it has to resonate with me, with my own truth. Mm, do I think this is, is possible? And uh, coherence, is there any coherence here? And, and if, I, if I feel so, I've learned that. I've learned to develop my, my intuition to, uh, to check with myself first. But from the point of view, I kind of agree with him. If you only work with the one side of the coin and you don't know the other side of the coin or you have absolutely no no source no tools of investigation it, it's kind of hard to make any statements yeah as, as a anyway as him as a scientist too it makes sense um, what he's saying exactly and then um, i know for me like, as i grew up in a religious household that I came to a certain age where I, I said, like, I just can't believe this just because you said so. Like, because I said so is not enough of an answer for exactly. me. Exactly. Um, you are not satisfied with what was offered by the world, which is science. And that was not enough. And, and, and like you and I, there are so many people like us that this is not enough. I feel that there is something, there is something else that is much more, it's much bigger, this energy in me that it can't be my brain controlling everything. And now with the Heart Math Institute, we know that the heart sends more information than to the, the whole body, more than the brain. So the more we we grow spiritually and more prepared we are for certain truths we will unveil little by little but can you tell everything you know for a five-year-old and and science only knows what it knows but science doesn't always know what it doesn't know and and i think yeah. that the best scientists in my opinion you know and not being a scientist i can't judge but the best scientists are the, the humble scientists mm. who say like well, this is what we can see, this is what we can measure, and 
the there's yeah. this is probably the tip of the iceberg yeah. <laughs> you know so we only know what we know we don't yeah. we don't know what we don't know so um yeah, me too. I agree. And I like when some scientists, they say, you know, science is an open book and unfinished, unfinished book. There will always be someone that will come and take my experiments and will continue and move and will move on. And that's that's how we we grow. Mm -hmm. I agree. So let's see what else Mr. Tyson has to say. The way I look at it is. It is the knowledge that I'm going to die that creates the focus that I bring to being alive. The urgency of accomplishment, the need to express love now, not later. If we live forever, why ever even get out of bed in the morning? Because you always have tomorrow. That's not the kind of life I want to lead. Those are great questions too. I mean, <laughs> we have to ask ourselves all sort of questions. Those, those are valid questions. What do you think? And um, when I heard that, I, I immediately thought of um, some of the spirit statements when they said, the reason why we don't um, remember our past lives and the reason why we're born without the awareness of our future life is because people would live an idle life knowing that we're just here on this planet and we're suffering with this body and feeling pain and knowing that like one day we'll be free of this body and we won't feel like this suffering on, on this level the way we are a lot of people would choose to just like live an idle life and, and wait it out until the next life comes um, and i've heard some people in the spiritist center express that very same idea like they can't wait until they die and and for me i i look at every day like another opportunity to grow and advance and, mm -hmm. and learn something so and and when um neil said this i thought this is interesting because a lot of the ideas he'd expressed um before this were were sort of materialistic ideas atheistic type of ideas um they they didn't have any real sort of spiritual character to them but when he talks like this, I, I say, like, he has a, a conscience deep down in him that's, like, compelling him to to be a, a good person, to do mm -hmm. something worthwhile, mm -hmm. um, to, to live a life that's, that's um, meaningful. And I thought that was sort of contradictory because we say, oh, when we die, you know, there's no evidence that we, we retain any consciousness. Well, why would you be concerned about living a, a, a good life? about you know helping others about doing doing exactly. good things what what's, what's the point if you're not gonna your existence that's a very good point everything you said very very good point and very important too to think about how good are these uh, scientists questions to our um, inner growth or spiritual development I think they're useful I think they're useful even if you you think, oh, but they are very materialistic, but they're mm. useful. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, everything, everything, we, we, should, we should see from different perspectives. Yeah, we should. We and should, listen would, to everything and read to I, I like playing the devil's advocate, so to speak, when it comes to these sort of spiritual Absolutely. matters. Absolutely, me too. Is, is I like to... You know, I don't think it's wrong to, to just like sort of uh, be the bad guy for a minute and say like, well, what if this is not true? And then exactly. sort of you sort of play the tape through. And what if it is true? You know, what and if consider it is? Uh, which which really is um, true. Science is not to do an experiment hoping that you get a certain outcome. It's to do an experiment to see what happens and and to and to observe it and not not because you want to. Um, like get a certain result right. every time you know that's that's um that's more like uh, paid science <laughs> you know like oh we, yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to right. make this happen need we, need to to, we need to have this we need to make this product and yeah. need to make this this chemical agent or whatever but but true science and it's is you know true essence is right. to to observe i have friends a lot of friends who are atheists um on facebook <laughs> you know and in, in my life people people have come and gone through my life and um um, 
you know, we we can talk about things and we don't have to uh, disagree. And and sometimes I can see how they would how they would see things mm. that way. But I do like to consider everything from exactly. from every viewpoint. And I think mm. I think really um, as a, as a spiritist, as somebody who doesn't practice dogma, um, we do have to consider every viewpoint. It's really up to us, like more so than anybody else, to to consider everybody's viewpoint and and exactly. um, we we keep what works for us came up to my mind right now that we also will take whatever knowledge we have to the eternity with us. So it can always be useful. That's why we need to be open, open heart, open mind uh, to, to the knowledge because we will need to experience everything. And it's, everything is, is good. It is better than to close your mind and your eyes for the things we don't know how things will turn will will move forward and it is hard to know because we need to be uh, to prepare ourselves to we need to be more maturely mature uh, uh, intellectually and morally so to speak so we can uh, get a promotion we can get more more knowledge and we can tap into the spiritual life in the laboratory so let's see what neil has to say next and what i look at is i see all the belief systems and when you line them up they're not really compatible with one another so whatever they're believing it can't be a truth that applies to everybody because other people believe what they do with no less fervor. And so I sit back and as a person who's interested in, ob in objective truths and I say, well, it doesn't look like that's a path towards an objective truth. So let people continue to think and say what they want. I felt like Neil's viewpoint of religion was mainly observing it from the um, viewpoint of, of the dogmas and the articles of faith where a lot of the religions disagree with each other, and and this is a common thing. And I've I'm I'm guilty of this as well, um, where where I say I look at a, at a at a religion or a religious group and say you know they do this, um, they might have this one practice, so and I don't agree with that, so I'm going to throw the whole thing away. So I really feel like in this perspective, we're looking at religion, trying to find the differences rather than trying to see the commonalities and whatever like universal truths, um, like the golden thread that, that goes through all religion. Um, we're, you know, we're talking about practicing charity, practicing love for one of you know, our neighbors. Uh, this was an interesting thought from Neil. What do you make of it? I don't know if he's aware of everything. I, I, don't, I don't think it would be fair to, uh, th to put such a pressure in someone just because we think they are very smart. He doesn't know everything. There are projects such as Togetherness. I don't know if you know about them. So Togetherness is it's a, a reunion, a, a, a meeting of, a gathering of all the religions and all representatives of religions. They got together and they actually, they work together. And what they bring to the table, it's what they get in common. So I don't know if I agree with him 100%, but what I know is that he doesn't know everything. And he doesn't know all the initiatives and the, and the programs that people are trying to do and change. He knows about his fields and he reads a lot. Okay, he's a very smart guy, but nobody can really know everything. And who knows if there is a movement with the togetherness, for example, I don't know if there are other uh, initiatives like, like the togetherness, but who knows, maybe there are other initiatives that people are trying to have a common sense of one truth for everyone and come together and work together. And I definitely feel like as I watch it, I was thinking he's he's obviously talking about like those other religions and he's not talking about spiritism. You know, he must not know about yeah, spiritism. Yeah, probably um, not. <laughs> spiritism really is the path to the objective truth. Um, the whole way that the 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 teachings were codified, um, the, the testing, the retesting, the way we um, test communication with spirits, 
we don't accept anything we hear <laughs> the first time. You know, we, we have to test and retest, verify, confirm. Um, it's, it's a very scientific process that we use, and, and um, it really is objective. It's not, it's not so subjective. But if, if all religions agreed on everything, it would be pretty boring, wouldn't it? <laughs> and actually, um, it's, it's really our diversity as a, as a world, not just citizens of the United States or citizens of North America or South America, but we're all really citizens of this planet. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's really our diversity mm -hmm. that encourages us to come up with new ideas, um, break down barriers, um, you know, reach for this, the sky and, and, and f discover our true potential. I agree with you, especially because not even the scientists themselves can agree with one truth. And, and what we think we know today, tomorrow we find out. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and, and, and not that anything is good or bad, but these are all just steps towards, exactly. towards our evolution as individuals, and as a society, and as a, as a planet, as a, as a human race. Absolutely. So this is exciting, and, and um, I really appreciate this, this talk from, from uh, Larry King and Neil deGrasse Tyson. And yes. I, I found it very interesting. I, you know, so many things I, I really sort of connected with. And uh, like, you know, as I was listening to him, I felt like I could connect with him, with some of his ideas and, and with his, you know, with his longing and desire to, um, to like have a positive impact on the, on the mm -hmm. planet, on the, mm -hmm. on the earth. Um, in other parts of the interview, he, he talks about wanting to leave the world a better place for his children. Um, and, and we didn't have time, obviously, to play the whole interview, but there'll be links um, available Good. for you. I hope that we can get together and do more of these in the future. Absolutely. Uh, I love it. It was a great talk. Yeah. It's a great topic. It was my idea. Um, <laughs> so, That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. If you are interested in contacting us, you can reach us at spiritismnetwork at gmail.com. Um, we're also on Broward Spirit Society at Facebook. Um, or leave your comments. Leave comments. We're accessible. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you again.